Hello and welcome everyone. Carrie here from Healing Humanity, the Power of a Proper Human Diet. And I have Kevin here with me. Kevin, how's it going? Going good, Carrie. So good to thank you for having me on. So good to be here. Absolutely. Hey, I'm looking forward to uh, to hearing your story some more. Uh, Kevin sent me an email a while back with his story. It sounded incredible. And, um, you know, one of the other reasons I really wanted to talk to you, Kevin, and share your stories because sounds like you really want to help other people from what you've learned through the carnivore diet. And I share that sentiment as well. So uh, plus, just to be honest, your transformation is incredible. <laughs> it's really amazing what's what's happened in a short period of time. Kevin, do you mind quick if I show? Uh, well, I guess you probably don't mind because it's in the thumbnail, but I was going to just show yeah. your before and after you sent me here. Yeah, just go for ahead. everyone that uh, it usually takes a little while for folks to jump on. Uh, I'm going to show Kevin's little before and after picture here. Uh, let's see. There we go. Hopefully you guys can see that okay. That's incredible. So, what What is like, what is that time frame? Um, that time frame was probably about uh, nine and a half to 10 months. Um, that was quite a transformation. I, it's kind of hard to, to look at that picture. Uh, I remember that guy very well. Do you have, just a, a kind of a side question. Do you have other before pictures like this? I found one thing was these before and after pictures, they're kind of hard to look at for me too. I'm down a, um, a little over a hundred pounds since I, from my heaviest. I don't have a lot of pictures of the before. I seem to hide a lot and I had like big heavy coats on all the time. And was that the case for you too or? Yeah, see that shirt that I'm wearing there on the left side, that's a 3X shirt. And I just, over the years, I just started buying shirts that were really big and baggy. You know, I'm not that tall. I'm only five, seven. So those shirts would come down to my knees. Um, but yeah, I mean, I just tried to stay out of pictures and, um, my sister-in-law, uh, sent a picture to my wife and I the other day from the Christmas, uh, right before I went into the ICU and I was at 310 pounds sitting on her couch. And that, that was tough to look at. That was, that was hard to look at. Wow. And, and where are you from, Kevin? I'm from Charleston, South Carolina. So born in Charleston and my wife and I have been in Charleston forever. So we're one of the few people in Charleston who, who didn't move here from Ohio. Nice. Well, if you could, uh, we got a bunch of people jumping on here. For, for everyone joining us, uh, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, please, if you have any questions, leave them with a big QQQ on the side. We'll take some questions near the end. But first, I wanted to learn a little bit more about Kevin and hear his story. Kevin, could you tell us a little bit more about how you found carnivore? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the, let me start with the Christmas of 2021, the week before Christmas and New Year's. Uh, that was the uh, we were still under pretty heavy quarantine back then. Quarantine was starting to kind of lift from COVID. Well, I got COVID. Um, I got sick. I had dodged it for quite a while and I was at 310 pounds and I remember getting sick and immediately my wife moved upstairs. I stayed in the bedroom downstairs and long story short, after battling COVID for three days on my own, uh, she found me passed out uh, about 4 a.m. one morning uh, in the bathroom floor and I remember telling her, you got to get me to the emergency room and uh, Deborah was able to get me in the car get me to the emergency room. And I didn't realize how serious it was. But once we got to the emergency room, Deborah and I got separated. And I did not realize I would not get to see my wife or kids again if I did not come out of ICU. Um, they were not allowed to visit. I didn't get a, I didn't get to hug her by. I didn't get to tell her I love you or anything. Um, I went from the emergency room and I found myself in a bunch of x-ray machines. And then I was getting hustled into an ICU room. And um, the doctors come in and told me that I had COVID lungs, um, that I uh, had all the risk factors, and that there was not a whole lot they can do for me. Um, they had one experimental drug. They were willing to, to try if I was willing to sign off on it, but they pretty much told me that um, I, was the, I was the case that didn't normally survive that bad of COVID lungs. And over and over, repeatedly, I was told by the doctors and the nurses, how morbidly obese I was. And, and I was considered clinically and morbidly obese. And that, I really began to sink in, Carrie. Um, I sat in that ICE room and I began to not be able to talk to my wife. I didn't have my phone with me. Uh, so when I went into the ICE, ICU, 
um, or emergency room, Deborah had my phone in her purse. So I didn't even have a phone. I didn't even have a way to text my wife or call her or anything. And they were wanting to consider intubating me. And I had to give them perm permission to intubate me if, if that came to that. And I sat there, Carrie, and my whole world just came crashing down. Um, and I realized I had gotten myself in a pretty bad spot. You know, could I have gotten COVID uh, being healthy? Sure. I mean, lots of healthy people got it and, and tragically died from it. It's a very, very tough thing. But I was told repeatedly how I did nothing to help myself, how I was so obese and how my lungs were so rattled with, with COVID. I survived. I came out of ICU um, uh, New Year's Day of 2022. And um, that was a new start for me. But I struggled all of 2022. I did everything that we were taught to do. I did all the salads. I did all the plants. I cut back all meat. I went low fat, no fat. I was doing everything I could to, to get myself healthy. And I could not make progress. Um, I was just spinning and spinning and I would put on more weight and I would lose a little weight, but I was starving myself. I literally, the only way that I could get any inches or anything off of me was to starve myself. And I really became dysfunctional. I started tracking calories. I downloaded all these apps. I'm a technology guy during the day. So I started counting calories, doing all this stuff and logging all my macronutrients and I wasn't making progress. And, um, I finally, one day towards the end of 2022, after a year, of pretty much no progress, I stumbled onto a keto, a keto diet. And I began to do some investigation on the keto diet and I actually made some progress on the keto diet, but I was still, you know, I was cheating. So in keto, you can have all these keto snacks and all these things. And I'm a sugar addict. I'll just say it. I grew up that way. Um, I grew up in the seventies. Uh, I'm almost 55 years old and, and I struggle with sugar addiction. I, I can, I can eat sugar all day long and, um, keto kind of, I kept breaking into those sugar habits, all these keto snacks and artificial sweeteners. I made some progress and made some progress. And then one day I stumbled along, uh, Dr. Kim Berry's channel. And then from there went to Dr. Anthony Chafee's channel. And I'm listening to all this stuff about carnivores. And in March of this year, I made the decision, I'm going full carnivore. And I went full carnivore um, and I never looked back. I mean, have I, have I fell off at times? Absolutely. Um, I, I actually uh, had a pretty big setback in June when Deborah and I went on a big vacation before I changed jobs. And I put on 20 pounds very quickly, but then I came back. So one of my YouTube videos, I talk about that event, but... Uh, I found carnivore and carry. It has absolutely changed everything about my energy, um, my strength training. Um, it has just been fantastic. Wow, that's amazing. So you said in March? Yeah, March of this uh, February, March time frame, I, I went full carnivore. That's awesome. I think that's around the same time I started. I got to look on my little app now. <laughs> right, right. Pretty yep. close. And it was shortly after that, I, I used to do a lot of weightlifting back in my late teens and early 20s. About the time Deborah and I got married, I quit weightlifting back in 1991. Um, but through high school and up till 21 years old, I was a pretty big power lifter. Um, but I haven't really lifted weights seriously since 1991. And um, I started back into the gym doing three days of basic weight training and just doing some walking in the evenings. And um, with the carnivore stuff, I, I began to get stronger and stronger. And uh, it has just amazed me. My energy levels, I came off blood pressure medicine. I was on a very high dose of blood pressure medicine. They were wanting to put me on uh, cholesterol medicine and they were, kept telling me I was pre-diabetic, that my A1Cs were high, my, my fasting glucose was high and um, my hands, my hands would tingle. I'd have some numbness in the ends in my hands a good bit uh, before all this. And I knew I was probably not pre-diabetic. I was probably in the early stages of diabetes. So, um, and, and here recently, a couple months ago, I bought a, um, 
I bought a glucose meter that uh, can test for glucose and, and ketones. And I've been tracking that some, but I don't use it that much anymore because I've kind of figured out, you know, how my body reacts to different foods and things like that. It's pretty simple when you eat beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Uh, it really kind of eliminates a lot of the variance in, in what's coming into your body. Right. Awesome. Hey, sorry, I'm fumbling around here. A couple of people in the chat said they couldn't hear me. Am I coming through okay now? I just changed my mic back over. Uh, you, you still sound good to me. Okay. Uh, hopefully in the chat, you guys can let me know if everything's sounding okay. So yeah, Kevin, that's, wow, what an amazing story. So the keto thing re really resonated with me, those keto snacks. I had the the exact same issue. Um, I always find it frustrating. I don't know if you have this on carnivore, but people just keep telling me, oh, why can't you just eat in moderation? You can't just eat meat only, just eat in moderation. I've tried that many times and I, you would never say that to an alcoholic or someone that overcame like a big drug, a big drug addiction. Oh, why don't you just do your drug in moderation right now, just a little right. bit and you'll be just fine. It's crazy to me that people say that it, it's really frustrating too. Cause, uh, how sugar just gets a complete pass. I don't understand why sugar just gets a complete right. pass. It's so addictive. It's so bad for you. There's so many more studies coming out. And the more I'm learning now with my friend, Jeff, about, uh, cancer and chronic inflammation from eating sugar for sh uh, for years and years and how that can lead to eventually cancer for some people. It's insane, but it just, it's a complete pass. So, uh, don't yep. understand it, but, um, wow. So what, what were some of your first things, uh, when you started carnivore, like how was it for you, uh, adapting to carnivore? That's a big issue for a lot of people. Those first couple days, the first week or two. Yeah. I mean, I had, like I said, you know, watching Dr. Kim Berry and Anthony Chafee and not long after all that, as I, I, I started hearing about you, um, a lot of people began to kind of educate me on, Hey, you may experience, you know, this flu symptoms or some low energy and all that. So I kind of got ahead of that curve and, and, um, I'm a big, I love real salt, the, the brand real salt, the same stuff that you talk about in your videos. And we went out and bought some, uh, I bought some unflavored electrolytes, um, uh, from, from Redmond's. I didn't do the flavored stuff because of all the artificial flavoring, but in the beginning, I did kind of do some electrolyte supplementation, um, maybe once a day, but after the first couple of weeks, I, even that, I kind of put that aside because I salt, uh, my beef and my meat, I salted a lot. I use, I use red, I use the real salt pretty freely on everything I eat. Um, and quite frankly, after the first couple of weeks of me supplementing with electrolytes, I just, I just kind of put it away. Now my wife still uses it some here and there, but I just, I just keep going and, um, uh, getting, getting past those first couple of weeks for me were, were key. I did make some mistakes early on, Carrie. Um, I, I, it is so difficult to, let go of everything that was beat into us in the seventies and eighties about you can't eat fat. You got to do low fat. And I, I caught myself doing carnivore without a lot of fat, you know, and that kind of messed me up there for a little bit. I really kind of plateaued out and was not feeling all that well. And I'm like, what's going on? And, and I said, okay, I'm going to just really start up in my fat content. And now I eat a lot of fat. I probably eat more fat then people, they probably think I'm crazy. Um, but I'll add butter. Like I'll try to, I, I get 80, 20 ground beef. And I told my butcher the other day, he asked me if he can make me 70, 30. And he said, yeah, I can, I can grind you fattier beef. And, um, I put butter and ghee and a lot of my stuff. But when I upped my fat intake, that made a tremendous difference with my energy. I was fuller. I wasn't snacking. I mean, before I did that carry, I would be up at 10 o'clock at night and I would be doing something. And then right in the pantry, you know, I'd be like, I'm hungry, I'm hungry. And, and no one likes to live hungry. Um, but when I up my fat intake, all that went away. And I, I, you know, I even shared that with Deborah and my wife. I'm like, you got to eat more fat. You got to eat more fat with your protein. And actually that led me to two meals a day. Um, sometimes I'll eat one big meal a day. Um, but the fat has really done that. One of the comments when I was posting about this live stream, one guy was like, or one gentleman was like, I just, I'm so tired of counting calories. I'm so tired of staying hungry. 
And I'm like, join the carnivore way of eating and you won't count calories anymore and you eat until you're full. Yeah. Yeah. I When I first started carnivore, I was like, I'm just going to do this for 30 days and then I'll go back to like keto, you know? And then when right. it happened, I'm like, I don't want to do that was one of the main reasons. Well, the main reason was I felt incredible on carnivore. I'm like, why would I change anything? And then the second reason was like, I don't want to count calories and carbs and sit here and have to think about things anymore. I don't ever have to do that. I, I love your point about getting the fat too. I, I ran into that exact same issue. I don't know what it was. I just, uh, I started easing down on it. I'd start eating more like sirloins and strip steaks. And then before yep. you know it, I wasn't getting enough fat. I just kind of didn't realize it. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think I've told this before when Adam and I went to film Maggie, uh, the, 82 year old carnivore rancher and we had breakfast with her she would cook up a big uh a huge bowl of fat she was just chopping up beef fat putting it into a cast iron skillet cooking it over a wood fire and we had that with breakfast every morning and i never felt better that week when i was getting that fat every day and maggie even told me she said carrie i couldn't get through the day without this <laughs> fat she's like i know right. what i'm doing she's basically like i know what i'm doing here just listen to me She's like, we've had some rough days, some long days, some days on the farm. She's like, you, she said there was a one, one time where they had to work 32 hours straight without sleeping. She's like, wow. certain times of the year this happens. She's like, I could never have done that without getting the fat. Um, I was also very fortunate to have uh, Dr. Kiltz on the channel a while back. And he said on the channel, it has nothing to do with the meat. It should be called fat of war. It's all about getting the fat. That's the only reason this works is because you're getting the fat. So... Yeah, I love that you said that. That's really good advice. A lot of people mess that up uh, for sure. If you can't get it on the fatty steak, because I know a lot of people just like the texture of the fat, mm -hmm. um, the rubberiness or whatever. Uh, I like to do what Maggie taught me and take it and put it in a cast iron skillet, crisp it up a little bit, and that helps with it. Um, or you can do like Kevin mentioned, add butter. I do that a lot. Like if I get a strip steak or something, I'll just add a whole bunch of butter to it. And uh, yeah, definitely, definitely feel a lot better. So Kevin, you mentioned your wife, Deborah as well. So what about your wife, your family? Are, are they on board? Well, I guess, first of all, do they think you're crazy when you started doing this? And are any of them on board with you now? Uh, in the beginning, um, I think a fair amount of people thought I was crazy. I still have some of my extended family who can't believe I don't eat vegetables and fruits. And, you know, they, they still really believe that eating all this meat is going to give me a heart attack and kill me. Um, uh, Deborah uh, has had a lot of a success on it, and that was really key for me. Um, we're kind of early empty nesters. Um, my daughter uh, graduated from Clemson, go Tigers, um, and she's uh, she's living out in Colorado. And my son is a senior at Clemson right now, so you know we kind of have the house to ourselves. And having Deborah join in on this, so that we ate the same things. And, you know, if she if I was trying to do this, and Deborah's over here eating spaghetti and pasta and all this stuff. I would have probably failed because I am, I, I was so addicted to that food. Um, and you know, like if, if she's eating a piece of pizza and I'm trying to eat ground beef and some scrambled eggs and I smell that pizza, that makes it hard. My son, um, he has pretty much adopted keto vor. Uh, Daniel's really kind of coming around. Uh, he's lost about 70 pounds over the last several months and has gotten pretty involved in weightlifting, uh, uh, himself. And, um, he still dabbles with a little fruits here and there. Um, and, but his, his skin has cleared up tremendously, um, eating more fatty meats and, and lowering down his processed food, you know, Carrie, eliminating processed foods, seed oils, and sugar. Those were, those are key. If, if pe I really feel like if people would just start there, and ease into like the keto with eliminating seed oils, processed foods and sugars and stick with whole foods, but high fat and meat and then graduate into carnivore. That would be amazing. And that's kind of where my son Daniel is right now. He's kind of I think Daniel will eventually go full in. And my daughter, Rebecca, she's on, she's probably watching the live stream tonight, I'm sure. And she's she's really doing a lot of studying. And um, I've given her a lot of your info and and different things from different uh, influencers that have made a big difference on the carnivore journey for me. So it's my entire family, immediate family. And some of the other family members outside of our family, they're kind of watching. They've seen the transformation. 
Um, I mean, like I said, my sister-in-law sent a picture the other day and was like, oh my gosh, you don't really realize how far he's come in a year until you look at these before and after pictures. So uh, that's been kind of cool. Um, and, I, you know, I don't, I'm a lot like you, Carrie. I'm, I don't preach it a whole lot. I don't try to shove it down people's throats. Uh, the other night um, I was in the gym at Planet Fitness and me and a gentleman began to talk. And, uh, you know, he he um, he was open to what was going on in my life. And I shared, um, you know, much like sharing one's faith. You know, I kind of shared, hey, here's here's where my life has been and here's what's going on. And we actually exchanged phone numbers and I shared with him the live stream. I don't know if he's on tonight or not, but. You know, when people open that door and they're like, hey, you know, it, first of all, it usually is like, how old are you? And I'll tell them I'm, I'm almost 55 years old. And they're like, wow, you're almost 55. OK, um, you know, what do, what kind of workout routine do you do? What's going on? You know, and and um, and then, I, I, you know, I just lost 110 pounds. They're like, whoa, what? How did how did you do that? And I'm like, oh, it's. It's the carnivore. And they're like, and it's amazing, Carrie. Some people were like, carnivore, what is, what do you mean carnivore? And I'm like, oh, well, I eat beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. And um, they're like, well, you don't eat vegetables or you don't eat fruit? I'm like, no. And they're like, wow, do you do like protein shakes? Do you, do, uh, no, <laughs> no, I don't do protein shakes. I eat beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. You know, and, I, and every now and then I'll eat chicken and, or we'll do pork. I, I love pork belly. I love pork belly. Um, that's, that's almost, that's very addicting in itself, but, um, no, I mean, when people open that door, I'll share it, um, and, and try to try to give them some information and usually share with them some of your videos and some of Dr. Kim Berry's videos and Anthony Chafee's videos. And, and I just start kind of, um, sharing that out. I have a little playlist of stuff that when people have questions, um, I try to give them information about that. That's great. Yeah, I, I've had that same conversation with so many people. It's really, I almost want to print out something and hand it to them about, because they'll say that, oh, you're doing carnivore, but you, fruit, right? No, no fruit. Vegetables, right? No. Well, surely you eat salads. Still, No, it's no. just me. They don't, yeah. they don't get it. It's funny. I just did, a, I just finished an eight day fast yesterday with my friend Jeff. And uh, I was getting similar questions during the fast. So what, what, what are you eating? Nothing. It's a fast. Nothing. Water. What about like you're having some uh, bone broth, aren't you? No, uh, nothing. Just water. What about tea? Surely you're having coffee still, right? I'm like, no, it's just fasting. It's pretty funny. Uh, so, so Kevin, could you tell us a little bit more? You touched on some of this, but what what are some of the improvements? Um, if you don't mind sharing like numbers, what, weight loss, and then off scale victories. What are some of the things you noticed uh, on carnivore? Yeah. So, um, 110 pounds of, of weight change on the scale. Um, I was a size 48 waist at my heaviest. Um, and I'm back down to a 34, 36. Now my goal is a 32 inch waist. Um, my goal weight right now, and I'm not there is uh, 190 to 195. Even though I'm only five, seven, I've always been a little heavier. Like even, even back in the day when I was 20 years old, I would do some competitions for bench press and squat competitions. I remember my physicals, the doctors would tell me you're way overweight for five, seven, you should be 140 or 150 pounds. I'm like, doctor, I haven't been that since the seventh grade. Sorry. You know, um, it's just kind of some of my genetics off the scale. Uh, my energy has just been through the roof. I mean, <laughs> you know, early on is like, um, in, in my technology job, a lot of, some days I work from home. Um, and during COVID we all work from home, but in my line of work, we don't have to be in an office. As long as I have an internet connection and VPN, I can work on all of our infrastructure and all of our cloud platforms and all of the engineers on my team can do their job. So I was home and I began to just clean and do all this stuff around the house. And Deborah, my wife's a school teacher. And I just, I just couldn't find enough to do. I started walking. Um, when Deborah would leave for work um, around 6 15 AM, I'd go hit the block. You know, I had my phone on me and I, you know, I could still slack with my team if we were, if anything was going on, but I would go walk. And, and in the beginning, when I first started walking, Carrie, walking an eighth of a mile was a journey. I mean, my feet hurt, my knees hurt. I was out of breath. 
but I can go, me and you can go out right now and I can go walk a, a five mile walk. I mean, intentionally walk and really get out and hoof it and, and just keep going. Um, I slept better. So before all this, Deborah would wake me up a lot at night because one, I was snore really bad, but Deborah kept telling me, she's like, you're not breathing. She said, you, she goes, I literally would sit up in bed because you would take this huge breath and then stop. And she said, I thought many times I thought this is it. He just died. And she would sit up in bed and she would just stare at me and, and I wasn't breathing. And then she said, I would just gasp for air and then start snoring again. But she said, it'd be like 30 seconds of nothing. And I, I didn't know this. And she's like, you're something's wrong. You're, you're not breathing. You're not, something is wrong. All that's gone. I haven't snored in, I don't know, since, since I lost the first 50 pounds, all the snoring quit, all the, uh, all the stop breathing quit, came off all my meds, my energy. Um, I need to have my testosterone tested, uh, before I went into ICU, literally the month before I got sick. My blood work was pretty bad. And my doctor said, Kevin, we really need to consider putting you on some testosterone therapy. She's like, how are things? And I'm like, they're pretty tough. And uh, she's like, yeah, um, you really need to consider hormone re replacement therapy or some testosterone cream. Well, I said, well, my dad has a history of prostate cancer and I've always heard, you know, uh, cancer will cancer and testosterone with the prostate don't always go well together. And she's like, well, you, she goes, you, you have to have help here. You, you, as a man, your things just aren't working. I'm like, yeah, they're not. And, um, so once I started down this journey, all that improved, um, my testosterone levels, I can tell from the gym, my strength in the gym, Carrie, I feel like I'm 35 years old again. I have to kind of remind myself in the gym at times that, hey, I'm almost 55. You know, don't do anything stupid. Don't try to throw around too much weight. And I've really learned to moderate my reps and my routine because I'm not a 21 year old anymore, you know, and I have abused my body for 45 years. I have just flooded it with improper foods and I've always had high glucose and you know, I know, I don't know what my insulin levels are, but I'm pretty sure after 45 years of the way I ate, I'm pretty sure that I was very much an insulin resistance type person. I can't prove that, but, um, I feel stronger in the gym. Now I can't bench what I benched when I was 21 years old doing bench press competitions, but I, I feel like I could hang with a lot of people at 55 years old if they were even in their thirties, I feel like I could, I could hang strength wise with a lot of those guys in the gym. I didn't have that energy when I was 20 years old and all that's cleared up. Um, skin tags. So I was, beget, I was developing skin tags a lot and I got one little one left right here on my cheek and it has almost completely gone away. So all of my skin tags have pretty much cleared up. I have a few remaining that I'm working on. And I'm, I'm intentionally not having them removed. I want my body to remove them and they're all disappearing. So all these things, the numbness in my hands, all that's went away. Um, and it's just, I, I could talk for hours, Carrie, about how the energy level and everything is different. Um, it's just been a life changing event for me. That's amazing. What about on the cognitive mental side? Have you noticed any? Oh changes yeah. There? Yeah. Nah. And you know, in my role, it's, it's, um, during the day, it's a very mental job. So I'm responsible for all of our infrastructure and all of our hosting environments. And I have a team of engineers that, that work in my organization and we are the team that keeps everything running. We're the team that does all the capacity planning, all the security. We're watching all of these measurements and there's a knock, um, a network operating system center aspect of my job where we're always on my team is on seven by 24. Um, my, my cognitive ability has improved greatly. I'm more productive. I'm able to have more intelligent conversations. Um, and, and I'm finding that, um, you know, stress, I handle stress differently. Whereas before, if, when I got stressed, I would, I would get very angry and I really had a hard time controlling that. And 
kind of managing that now has has really improved as well. Um, it's 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 made a huge difference on my ability to think and think clearly. I keep getting these weird uh, carnivore moments of clarity, epiphanies, where it's like, "Whoa, this stuff was so messed up that I used to think yep. of before." Have you had anything like that? Yeah, uh, and a lot of it is. Um, it, it's it's really interesting when I look back over some of the things I've done even before this, and I and I go, "Man, I, what was I thinking? What was I doing?" Even some of my suspension videos. So I do a lot of drag racing suspension videos, and I, I even look back at some of the stuff I've posted then, and I'm like, I can see in those videos I was struggling breathing. I was really struggling to find some thought. And now I'm, I've actually considered going back and redoing some of those videos uh, because of the clarity I have around some of the stuff I was trying to explain. Right. Uh, also, shout out, I got a link to Kevin's YouTube channel in the description below if you want to check out some of his other past videos and maybe more future videos on carnivore oh, yeah. stuff. Who knows? <laughs> Oh yeah. There'll be more carnivore videos. I, I, I've had a lot of people asking me about my workout routine. You know, how do you break out your workout routine? I need to, I need to do better about sharing some of that stuff, um, as well. And, you know, some of the food choices I make, I mean, you know, earlier you talked about adding butter and everything. It took me a while to learn how to eat a fatty steak. You know, I grew up here again. I grew up, don't eat fat. Don't eat fat. If you eat fat, you're going to get fat. And you really, I had to kind of learn what fat tasted like. So, you know, I've watched a lot of your videos, Carrie. You've inspired me. I really think I'm going to start doing that reverse sear method that you show in your videos. I, I just throw mine on a pellet grill and I get the grill as hot as I can and I sear that thing and cook it. Um, and I, I usually pull it off the grill around 120 degrees because I'm cooking it so hot, it'll still heat up to 130, 135, even while it's resting. But I've had to, I actually start salting the fatty side of that ribeye. I put a lot of salt on that but while I'm when I put it in the refrigerator. And then I'll turn that thing up and try to get that that fat cooked a little bit. And now when I eat a ribeye, there's nothing left. You know, two years ago you'd have had all this fat trimmed off and I'd have pushed all that to the side. And now I've ha I've learned how to eat that and enjoy it. Um, so it's like, you know, like my son Daniel, he's still trying to get through that. He he'd rather have a New York strip because it's not as not quite as fatty as a ribeye. And I'm like, right. man, give me that ribeye. Give me that ribeye, you know, and, uh, and eggs. I eat a lot of eggs, Carrie. I, eat, I mean, we have really talked about, we should get chickens or something, but the, <laughs> with the amount of eggs I eat. So I eat a bunch of eggs. Yeah. I, well, I just broke that eight day fast and eggs were my, well, I had some bone broth, but then eggs were the first one. I did the, the power bowl. Um, my daughter Emma's doing carnivore with me too, and she makes up uh, a lot of eggs. Yeah, I, it, it's interesting. Like with the meat and the beef and stuff too, people are like, "Don't you get bored of that?" Or even with the eggs, and I'm like, I'm still finding different ways to prepare them or cook them. I make my eggs now. It's it's probably kind of really weird, but I, I guess I'm really a weird person. But I'll take my eggs and I just like the yolks, so I will actually separate the whites and I'll do it. It's like. I tell Emma it's like crispy fried egg yolks. That's my recipe, yep. I guess. And it's just just the yolks, which is a little bit of white around them. And I'll do a whole bunch of those and get them nice and crispy. You eat that with a ribeye. I don't think there's anything better in the world to eat than that. I, I feel so good after after eating yeah. something like that. I hear you. Yeah, I, we love taking some um, – the local butcher shop up here on Fridays, they make what they call their Oakland Burger Blends, and it's probably like a 60-40 um, – blend that has a lot of uh, bacon ground up in it and a, they use a lot of um, beef fat they put more beef fat in it and we will we will grill those and then we will cook some eggs over easy and put that over easy egg on it let that yolk run down that that uh that beef oh man that's amazing nice that's awesome so uh if anyone has any questions post them in the sidebar there we've got a couple here uh, I've got a few more. I was just going to ask you, are you doing anything with, uh, supplements or are you doing any other, I guess, additional practices or anything outside of carnivore that you feel are helping you? It seems like a lot of people do carnivore and then they start doing other things like exercise. Well, you mentioned exercise, but other things like, uh, grounding or getting sunshine or things like that. Ooh, sun. I, I, it's amazing. I crave sunshine. Um, and I actually believe there's a lot of healing um, property and sunshine. Uh, now, you know, I don't lay out there for hours on end, 
But, um, you know, any chance I got to get in the sun, even if it was for 15 or 20 minutes, I would get in the sunshine. Um, after COVID, um, when I was able to get outside, I was on oxygen when I came home for a month. Um, uh, even after they released me, I, I would go outside and sit in a chair in the sun with my oxygen. And I, I crave that right now it's kind of cold in Charleston, not compared to a lot of the U S but like tonight it's going to be 32 degrees. So, um, you know, that's cold for Charleston. Um, but I mean, so, and, and just the sun, we don't get a lot of good high sun anymore, but sunshine is something I crave. And, and it's like my body responds differently to it now. I don't know how to explain that. Um, when Deborah and I went down to Naples, Florida in June, I, I mean, I, I walked around everywhere without a shirt. Um, and I would lay out in the sun and Deborah's like, you're gonna, you're gonna get burned. And, and I was like, no, nah, I'm not, I don't understand it. But I mean, I would lay on my back and my stomach for hours on end by that pool and just soak that sun up. And, you know, I understand, you know, you got to be careful with sun poisoning and skin cancer and all that, but I, it's just been amazing. Uh, the amount of sunshine I crave and, and how that's helped me. Yeah. I've noticed the same thing. It's interesting. I got to be careful. I get people fired up when I say I don't get sunburn as a carnivore. It's yeah, a very, very controversial subject with people. It's so funny. Uh, there's something to it, though. I don't know. I don't know what it is. Yeah. Yeah. Early on, um, uh, I would supplement with um, with L-citrulline and um, just because of all the tingling and and I, you know, Carrie, I wish I could I wish I could gauge how much damage I did over the 45 years of the way I ate. Um, but in the early on, I would take L citrulline cause I've, I've always heard that helps boost nitric oxide and oxygen in the blood. But over the last several months, I've even, I've even quit that. Um, it's just, um, I just, I just feel like I don't really need any supplementation. Um, and the last blood work I had several months ago, my doctor about fell on the floor when I told her what I was doing. Um, I, I kind of didn't want to have that conversation with her because I knew what she would promote. And she asked me, she says, Kevin, what are you doing? And I said, do you really want to know? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I, I got to know. And I'm like, I went carnivore. And her mouth fell open. And she's like, wait a minute. What do you mean by that? I said, I eat beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. And I eat as much fat as I can get. And she's like, you're not eating any vegetables. I said, no. Any leafy greens? No. Are you eating any fruit? I said, no. And she's like, this defies everything we were taught in medical school. She's like, this, this completely, she goes, your numbers are amazing from where you went pre COVID to where you are now. She's like, all I can tell you is don't stop what you're doing. Wow. She goes, I, she goes, I'm going to have to dig into this more. She's <laughs> like, but this goes against everything I would have told you to do. As when you take the mic and drop it and just walked out. <laughs> right. Exactly. That's awesome. Well, that's nice that she said that she's got to look into it more and didn't immediately right. tell you, you got to eat vegetables. Are you crazy? Right. What are you doing? Yeah. I mean, she owned up to it. She said, whatever you're doing, just keep doing it. Nice. Just keep going. I've had, uh, I've had a similar, something said similar to me, whatever you're doing, just keep doing it. But I didn't tell them what I was doing. <laughs> right. Right. So, that's really cool. Yep. Uh, one other question. If you had any advice for someone that's uh, just thinking about starting carnivore today, but they're terrified to do it, what would you say to them? You know, I would say I, I, I was in a little different position because I almost lost my life. Um, so it's amazing what you will do when your life is on the line. Well, I would encourage people to step and think your life is on the line. Um, give it four weeks. You know, a lot of people are like, Oh, I tried it for three days. I'm like, no, you know, it takes, it takes several weeks for your gut to heal. You know, just think of all the time we have ate all this way, give it four weeks, um, and, and try it. And, you know, I, I, my daughter and I had a great conversation last night and, you know, uh, it, it is, a very sensitive subject of eating animals in the world we live in. And there are a lot of people who feel like, you know, that's not, that's not 
humane to eat animals? Well, I, I feel it is. I feel that we, we were designed to be carnivores and maybe somewhat omnivores, but we're not herbivores. You know, we don't have two chamber stomachs. We're not, we're not designed to, to eat and, and, and eat what the, the cows and the rudiment animals eat. Um, but I would encourage people try it, you know, and it's like, well, I can't afford to eat ribeyes. Yes, you can. If you're not buying everything else that you put in your pantry. I mean, literally, if you open my refrigerator, you're going to see some whole whipping cream, a bunch of eggs and a bunch of beef and maybe some chicken and some bacon. And even the bacon I buy is sugar-free bacon. I don't buy bacon that's, that's, um, uh, yeah, aged with sugar. Um, I'm that strict about what I, what I eat. And if people would just try this for four weeks and be honest with themselves, I have one vice that I still struggle with. that's not carnivore right now. And I even had some today and it's coffee, mm. you know, Carrie, I, I don't know. I'm probably gonna have to put myself in some type of a challenge where I challenge myself and I put, hold myself accountable. I think if I could cut out even the coffee, I think getting rid of the caffeine and that would even help me further. But you know what? Um, I've made great progress continuing to drink coffee and it's caffeinated coffee. I drink a lot of coffee, black coffee, and every now and then I'll add some whole whipping cream to it. I don't use half and half or anything like that. If I add any cream, it's real cream. I want full fat cream. And every now and then I'll put some butter in it um, just to keep my fat content up. But try it for four weeks. If, if people would just do that. And if you know what, if it doesn't work, Hey, no harm, no foul. You know, you, you've experienced something for four weeks and, and you gave it a chance to, to see what would happen. I, I honestly believe if, if people would do it, it would make a huge difference. Continue. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. People that are scared of starting carnivore, I like what you said, you should be scared of not starting carnivore. Right, right. You should be scared of doing whatever you did that got you to the point where you are right now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah. I never drank coffee. I was addicted to diet soda and luckily I was oh. able to quit that. Uh, I was horribly addicted to it. So I feel you, but there is something to, you can do it, Kevin. You can. Quit oh it. yeah. Dr. Oh, Chafee yeah. talks. Dr. Chafee has this thing. My friend Adam did where he was actually suggesting the hardest part with getting rid of coffee is uh, the caffeine withdrawals. Mm -hmm. And he mm -hmm. was suggesting uh, caffeine pills and you take a couple of them and then you reduce them down. My friend Adam, who's working on the documentary with me, did that and was able to was able to get over it. But there's something about it, Kevin, It's crazy. Like once you do that, you're like you feel like I am I'm in total control right now. Right. I, don't, I don't have to be in control by the coffee or anything else. But, hey, you're doing it. And you're having great progress. So I know a lot of carnivores still do coffee. So, um, yeah, let's see here. We got some kind of bunch of people in the chat if you guys have any questions just post them in the side i i, I always uh, i feel bad if i miss them so try to put a big qqq next to him so i don't miss them um here's not a question but i think this is your daughter so proud of you dad from rebecca yep. wilson yeah that's my oh, daughter that's sweet nice um here we go we got a couple questions edward said what consists of the fat other than butter yeah. So for me, um, uh, I, I eat, like I said earlier, when I eat a ribeye, I eat every bit of it. I, you know, now there's some pieces of fat maybe that you just can't chew. Okay. That, that I'll discard, but I eat every bit of the ribeye. Um, I buy the fattiest ground beef I can get. Um, like I said, I actually, uh, I found some 80, 20 and I asked the butcher, could you make it more fat? And he's like, yeah. And actually I have a butcher who actually puts some fat away like beef trimming fats. And they just give it to me. And um, I haven't tried what you said, Carrie, but I'll actually throw some fat on the grill and just cook it down um, and, and eat it. Um, so it's not always just butter. Um, butter and ghee is, a, is, a, is great for me, though. I enjoy that. And I've, uh, also my butcher has, um, he sells these containers of beef tallow. So I'm starting to use that more. And, um, and eggs have a very, it's, it's amazing how an egg is designed, right? I mean, it almost has this perfect ratio of fat and protein, you know, but growing up, we were told, don't eat the yolk, don't eat the yolk, you know? 
that's got so much cholesterol in it, so much fat, don't eat the yolk. But now I, like you, Carrie, I crave the yolk. I mean, I'd rather have the yolks and, you know, I'll take the egg whites, but I'd rather eat the yolks. So it's not just butter, um, you know, but butter definitely helps keep the fat content up. If you're eating meat that's lean, like when I eat chicken, um, I usually go for chicken thighs with skin on. Um, you know, chicken thighs are a little fattier. I think they have more flavor and we eat the skin. I don't, I don't discard the skin. Um, and I eat a lot of pork belly. I eat a lot of bacon. Um, and I don't mean a lot, but like when I, when I fry my bacon, like I said, I buy sugar-free bacon from Costco and I'll fry four to six slices of bacon. And, you know, growing up, we were taught, dump all that grease out, get rid of it. Not now, man. I, I'll, I'll whip up about eight or 10 eggs and I'll put all that in that bacon grease and scramble it and eat every bit of it. Nice. So, yeah. Yeah. The, the beef tallow, uh, has, has been a one that I've been enjoying too. If you start doing this, well, Kevin, don't do it. <laughs> the reverse seared is awesome. I'm going to try it, it. It's such a, you can't turn back once you do it. You're like, Oh, it's so good. Uh, and then you're spending an hour and a half every time to cook a steak or whatever <laughs> it takes. But I've done it where, um, I've, I've slow smoked it on the smoker, uh, till I get it to like maybe 120 degrees and then mm -hmm. I'll cook it in the beef tallow in a cast iron skillet. Oh, that's really good. Uh, I, I keep going back and forth between that or then grilling it over like charcoal, super hot and getting a sear on it. But in the beef tallow is, is really, really good. And then you get more fat too. And then yeah. you get, you get like when I first put the ribeye in the beef tallow in the cast iron skillet, I'll put the fat side down. Yes. Just sizzle that fat for a while. And then okay. at the end, you just get this juice in there. And then I'll actually take that and put it in like a little bowl or ramekin or whatever. And then I can dip the steak in it afterwards just to get even a little bit more. Um, yeah, it's definitely yeah. it's definitely all about the fat. I'm like you, Kevin. And if people saw me, they'd be like, that's wow. He's that's too much fat. But I'm telling you, that's not. the key. That fat is the key. Yep. yep. Bodies are craving it. Patty Winger yeah. asked. My friend started carnivore and has reached his goal weight. He doesn't want to lose more, but doesn't want to gain fat. What should he do? I, I mean, I'll take a swing at this, carry, and then you can jump in. But I sure. mean, pretty much for me, when I when I hit my goal weight, I'm still doing carnivore. Um, uh, I'm not restricting calories. And I know that's hard to believe. I, I don't know how many calories I eat. Um, but I probably right now, I'm probably eating two pounds of beef a day. Um, and, uh, I may eat one big meal and maybe a smaller meal. So like, like this morning I had, um, around lunchtime, uh, I ate, uh, about 10 eggs, um, with no cream or anything. I just, I put a bunch of butter and a cast iron skillet, cracked my eggs in there and just stirred them around. Um, and that held me, I was full and, but the early this morning we put a, um, a chuck roast in the crock pot. And uh, just salted it, put some water in there, and let it simmer all day. And then tonight, I probably had maybe a quarter to a half pound of beef, and I was full. So I, I've had to learn to stop eating when I'm full, or or when it doesn't taste good. Doctor Anthony Chaffey talks about that a lot, right? And and when you get your goal weight, though, you could do a couple things, right? You could you could you you could decrease some activity. Um, you know, there's a lot of thought around, I think I only lift weights three days a week. Um, and some days, some weeks is only two days a week. And I can't explain that because I feel like I have more lean muscle mass now at almost 55 working out two to three days a week than I did when I was in my early twenties working out six days a week and three hours in the gym. And right now when I go to the gym, it's 30 minutes and I'm done. Uh, and I, but I work out very intensely and I'm done. So I would say just, you don't stop carnivore because you've reached your goal weight. In my opinion, you just, maybe you go from two meals a day to one meal a day. I mean, your body will adapt, I believe, and tell you when to stop. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, um, I would have the same advice. Listen, listen to your body, eat till you're comfortably full. Uh, in this case, if he doesn't want to lose more weight, uh, doesn't want to lose more, but doesn't want to gain fat. So when I got down to my goal weight, I got incredibly hungry. 
And it was because all of the fuel I had, the fat on my body that my body was burning wasn't there anymore. So then I was hungry. So I had to start eating more. And uh, that's just that's exactly what I did. I just started eating more. Um, so, yeah, that's what that's what's worked for me to maintain things is uh, just kind of listening to my body and and eating a little bit more so I don't continue to lose the weight and kind of things have kind of stabilized out. It's kind of crazy how the human body is. Uh, my friend Jeff that I just did that eight day fast with, he's fasted over 30 times now for five days in a row. And he's the same weight now he was when he started this a year ago, which is just incredible to me. Every other week, twice right. a month, he fasts for five days. He's still the same weight. So he bounces back. He eats a lot more on his week uh, when, when he's eating. Uh, obviously, he's not eating anything when he's fasting for that week, but still the same weight after a year. So and he hasn't really had any issue maintaining his weight. He does have to eat significantly more on his eating week, uh, but that's, uh, yeah, it's working out well for him. Uh, question from Jill Jill. Kevin, what foods did you start eating when you first started carnivore and did you or do you eat any organ meats? Yeah. So when I first started carnivore, um, it, I really started with ground beef, bacon and eggs. I mean, I ate a bunch of ground beef. I, I can cook ground beef in so many different ways. Now I would make carnivore taco pie is what I called it, but it would be, you know, just salted ground beef with eggs and some full fat cottage cheese, blend it up, you know, I'd blend all that up, cook my meat, put it in there and then bake that in the oven. But it was, it was ground beef, eggs, and bacon. Um, and then I, I kind of got caught, like I said earlier, in, into eating lean ground beef, like 90, 10 and not adding butter and all this stuff. And then I kind of, I kind of hit this plateau and my energy levels begin to drop and I couldn't figure out what was going on. Then I started introducing more fatty steak, um, and fattier ground beef. Awesome. Uh, John Isaacson, I think, well, we kind of covered this one. Any <laughs> food you stay away from coffee? Um, I, I drink water and coffee, um, and I need to cut back on the coffee. Um, but I do get it. I do. Uh, I do drink water a lot. Sylvia, what, what butcher and where I'd love that burger blend. Yeah, it's the uh, local butcher shop. Um, it's the butcher shop in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina in the Oakland market. And they call it the Oakland Burger Blend. They make it every Friday. They only make it on Fridays and they make a bunch of it. And usually by Friday evening, it's sold out. But it's a it's the butcher shop franchise in Mount Pleasant, South Carolina. All right. Tina, Kathleen, uh, question. Have you noticed if your hair has grown back? Uh, unfortunately that hasn't changed for me. My hair began to thin on top of my head a long time ago. And, uh, I haven't really noticed any new hair growth. I haven't noticed consistent hair loss though either. So, but I haven't noticed anything growing back. Unfortunately, that might be one to watch. It's amazing. I've heard a couple stories about that, mm -hmm. that. And the other thing is like the color of the hair. I had like this big white gray patch for years and years and it completely filled in dark again which is kind of incredible wow um nathan smith asked kevin have you got any new goals since your health improved beat sean baker at rowing yeah i don't think i'll be challenging dr sean baker at rowing but um i, I think some of my new goals right now is, is my new i want to get down to 195 i want to get into a 32 size pants again um my biggest goal right now is to live as long as i can and uh, enjoy every minute I have with my wife, my children, my family, uh, with the with the friends around me. And um, I want to spread the word about carnivore. I want to help people. Um, I'll, Carrie, I, I want to get involved with Carrie and some of the stuff he's doing and see how we can help continue this story about healing humanity movie. And, you know, what what can we all do to keep educating people so they have choices, more informed choices? Awesome. Yeah, I love that. We'd love to talk to you more, work with you more for sure. I mean, mm -hmm. you just sharing your story here is really going to help a lot of people. I always say that because uh, your specific scenario, your age, everything is going to resonate with someone much more than my story would or someone else's story would. Um, plus, you just had such an incredible transformation that's going to get a lot of people's attention and want to listen like, hey, what is this Kevin guy up to? What did he actually right. do here? So, right. uh, 
Charger Mopar, the 40-year carnivore, our friend Rick, he said, have you tried cooking up heart attack chicken? Have you heard of this stuff, Kevin? I have not. Uh, this is uh, this is Rick's thing. Rick, I haven't done this yet, but I want to. Uh, I was I have an excuse, though. I was I didn't eat anything for the last eight days. Uh, this is uh, Rick's recipe. Rick, maybe you could leave it in the comment, but I think what he's doing is um, he's cooking up chicken in beef tallow, like deep frying it. Just chicken and beef tallow, but it comes out. I've mm. seen a couple people do it, including my friend, our shared friend, uh, JT Poco Moonshine family. It looks just like fried chicken, like Kentucky fried chicken. It looks, and I, I've heard from friends, it's incredible. So I've got to try it. I haven't, I haven't done that. I, I just, it looks amazing. I just, I don't do a lot of chicken. I kind of stuck on beef for a while, but I should switch it up and give it a try. Yeah, I would definitely try that out. I, here again, though, since I've done this, I don't eat as much chicken as I used to. I really don't. I mean, yeah. I don't, it's not that I don't like it. I just gravitate to beef. Same. Yeah, man, we sound very similar. Same thing for mm -hmm. me. Just like, eh, I'll just go with the beef. Yeah. Every absolutely. now and then, if I'm out and about, um, Buffalo Wild Wings, someone told me about them. They cook their chicken in beef tallow. My son uh, told me that. He, he yeah. told me that their chicken is fried in beef tallow. It's pretty good, too. I was surprised because that used to, pre carnivore, that used to be one of my favorites was getting some buffalo wings with the hot sauce and dipping mm. it in the dressing, which yeah. now I'm like, I would never, man, that dressing with all those seed oils. And now I'm hearing oh. those, those seed oils stay in your body for years and years. Mm -hmm. So I didn't want to do it, but um, I've gone a couple of times now. I, we were in a pinch and we stopped at a Buffalo Wild Wings and got the wings plain with just, I had my Redmond salt shaker with me. It was really good. Like I thought okay. I was going to be so disappointed. I, I don't know if it's because I'm carnivore, my my tastes are changing or whatever, but nice crispy chicken with the salt on it. I, I, I was fine with it. I was absolutely fine with it. Um, I'll give that a try. Yeah. And then my daughter, Emma has made some at home a couple of times in the air fryer, which is really good too. Mm -hmm. Surprisingly, you think air fryer versus deep fryer, but it's pretty darn good. Right. Uh, Paul is asking, Kevin, have you found you recover quicker now from workouts on carnivore compared to when you were younger? Absolutely. It is night and day difference. Um, you know, when I was younger, I would load up on carbs and everything, all the pre-workout junk that, you know, we were all taught to do. And uh, I'd go to the gym and kill it. And then usually uh, not too long after that, I'd, I'd be hurting. I'd, I'd be sore. My joints would be sore. It was like this cortisol just rushing through my body. Now, when I work out, most of the time I work out fasted. And um, I I feel like I could go a lot longer than 30 minutes. My intensity is much higher. I haven't been sore since I've started working back out. I can't explain it. I don't know why. Um, but I don't hurt my shoulders, my elbows, my knees. Nothing hurts after working out. It's weird. Yeah, same thing here. And I never really worked out much before that. But and I've my sister, uh, I just talked to her earlier today. She's still doing carnivore with me. Both of my sisters are carnivores. And but my older sister just started working out again. She sent me a picture the other day. She was at the gym. It was it was pretty awesome seeing it. But she said the same thing. It's just incredible how you don't get that soreness afterwards. It's right. It's, it's amazing. I think what's interesting to me, Carrie, is I, I have a better workout fasted. So like if like normally my last meal of the day is around six or six or six thirty PM Eastern, normally in the bed between nine thirty and ten because we get up so early in the morning. So like if I my last meal is around six PM, if I can get a workout in like during my lunch hour, that's the best workout hands down that I ever have. If I can't go during my lunch hour and a lot of days I can't, if I have to go like at six o'clock at night, I will eat my first meal like at two or two thirty or three sometimes and then go to the gym. And I can tell a difference because it's almost it's almost like, you know, you got all this blood going to your stomach trying to help with the food. It really impacts my workout. Um, so on the carnivore diet, I am stronger and I have a more effective workout when I work out fasted. Now, back in my 20s, when I tried that, I would almost pass out. I would, and, and I was told my sugar was going too low because I was pushing all this intensity, um, fasted, but my body was in this huge sugar glucose state that my sugar would drop too low. My, I would start losing my vision. My hearing would start going and I would get real dizzy and cold and I would have to drink Coke or orange juice to get my sugar back up. 
And then within about 15 minutes, I'd feel better. But then your stomach was completely ripped up after that event. Um, I don't have any of that anymore. Mm. I, I, I can I actually work out better resistance training when I don't eat for like 12 hours before I work out. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Do you feel like, um, do you feel like you're having all of these amazing results because you're eating meat now and you're carnivore or is it more just that you're kind of a proper human, like how we were always sort of intended to, to be? I, I feel like I am, I, my body is doing what I believe it was intended to do. Um, I, you know, I, I believe I am doing what my body wants me to do. And, um, I don't, if it's carnivore or whatever, but I think it's eating the proper amounts of fat, um, eating the protein with the fat. I have learned that without the fat, it's hard for your body to even digest the protein. I, I've seen on my glucose meters when I was eating a large amount of protein without the fat, my glucose would go way up. Mm. Be and, and then, of course, it would when it goes way up, you're going to re release a lot of insulin. That's going to drive your glucose back down. And usually it's going to go down lower than it was. Then you're going to crash. And then you're in this vicious roller coaster ride. Now that I'm eating the amount of fat I'm eating, my glucose doesn't go up that high. I may have like a 15 to 20 point glucose swing an hour and a half after I eat a high fatty meal. Whereas before, if I eat a bunch of protein without the fat, I'd have a 45 or 50 glucose number spike. And I'm like, why? I'm not eating carbs. I wasn't eating fat. Mm. That's good to know. I'm gonna yeah. I'm gonna text my friend Jeff that too because he's got the the uh, glucose monitor. He's been watching it real closely. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's uh, that's something. I uh, let me see here. We got another question. Oh, this is a good one. Uh, six, three, 300 pounds, third time around on carnivore. First two times I blew up and went on a sugar binge after a week or so. Any advice how to stick with it and will the weight come fast? So who's this? I, I don't, I don't know how to M pronounce Keith. his name. M Keith. So I've been very transparent tonight. I'm going to be very transparent back on, on this. Exactly. My first two months on the carnivore diet, I fell off the wagon a lot. I mean, it was, it's, I mean, it was almost like I was an alcoholic and this is when I realized if it was in the house and I could get my hands on it, I would eat it. And literally like I was on, I was, things were going so well on the carnivore diet and I can't remember what happened, but something happened. It was like 10 o'clock at night and I'm looking, looking around, doing some stuff in the kitchen. I open the cupboard and there's some Oreo cookies. I'm a big thing of Oreo cookies. I ate the entire freaking box of Oreo cookies. And I mean, I felt so bad. I mean, physically, my stomach, I, I mean, it was like three in the morning. I was up. I mean, it was like, boom, my body was like, what did you do? What did you eat? And, and here's what I had to do. It is so easy in the world we live in to punish ourselves and guilt ourselves. We're going to make mistakes. Early on, I, I, now I feel like I'm a lot stronger now than I was then. But, you know, just because you fall off doesn't mean you just quit and give up. You just you you get up, you dust yourself off, you learn from it and you keep going. Eventually, those sugar cravings do begin to die. They didn't die for me until I increased my fat content because I was still walking around hungry. And when you're hungry, when you have that hunger urge, your body is going to seek out food and it's going to seek out something quick. When I up my fat intake and I begin to eat a lot more fat, I wasn't hungry anymore. And that's really important. So I would encourage you to evaluate, are you getting enough fat? And if you do blow it, it doesn't mean you give up everything. You just get back on and get going. You know how to do the right thing and you just keep going. You don't, yeah. you don't quit everything. Yep. It's not a failure. It's a lesson. Yeah, I, absolutely. I, I fell off so many times when I was doing keto. Cause I did mm -hmm. keto for years and years. Um, the only thing I would add to what Kevin said was also if you're doing carnivore, especially like you said, it was just after a week or so that you, you had the binge, make mm -hmm. sure you're doing it true. And you're not, cause some people say I'm doing carnivore, but they'll still have some, uh, ketchup 
or they'll still wow. have some sauces or they'll still have some diet soda or things like yep. that. And if you have those things, you're still going to have those cravings, even if it's a, if, even if it's one of these fake yep. uh, artificial sweeteners, you're, you're having that you're still going to have the cravings. So give it all up and, and do the true carnivore uh, as well and see, see how that works. But yeah, getting the fat's a good one too. Uh, Justin said, my goal weight is just a number I picked equal to the weight I was in high school. What would be ideal for a person like me at five foot nine? That's a tough one. Yeah, that's a tough one, Justin. I don't, I don't really know, you know, five foot nine, you know, you could, a goal weight could be 180 for one person. It could be 195 for another. Um, uh, you know, I think, I think I would, it's kind of interesting. Um, I actually had an opportunity to use one of those um, scales that you stand on and hold with your hand. I wish my son was on here. I think it's an in-body scale. Uh, there's a nutrition store in the upstate of South Carolina, a supplement store, and they will let you use it for free. And it actually, uh, you know, if I stood on a like a scale that just did your weight and you put your height and everything in, it would still tell me even at 200 pounds right now and five foot seven, it would tell me that I am. Uh, I have a 40% body fat, but when I went and used this machine and, and it actually runs an electrical current through your body, you stand on it flat footed and you hold it with your hands. It's an in body scale. It actually has been very consistent. I've done it three or four times. My son does it once or twice a week now, but it measured me at uh 22% body fat back in August. I believe, I think now I'm probably closer to 18% body fat and that feels right. Um, but I mean, it's kind of hard to say what an ideal weight would be for five foot nine, depending on your build and stuff like that. Only I say that because I'm five, seven and, um, you know, a, a lot of people would say my ideal weight is 165 and I don't, I haven't been 165 since the seventh grade. Yep. Yeah. That's a tricky one. Really depends on your body type for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, S McCabe, uh, have you looked into longevity in the movie? Thanks for adding Thomas Seafried. Yes. Uh, good question. Uh, we filmed Maggie, uh, who's a rancher from Canada. She's 82. She's been carnivore for like 60 years. And it's funny you mentioned that too. I don't know, uh, Kevin, you mentioned Dr. Baker a little bit earlier. Dr. Baker was just on Joe Rogan. Yeah. Uh, I was able to, I don't know if people out there caught it. I think it just went up today. I, I was able to watch it earlier. And I actually, I got a screenshot and I texted it to Maggie. He actually mentioned Maggie on Joe Rogan, which is for people that don't know, like whatever you think mm -hmm. of Joe Rogan or whatever, man, millions and millions of people are going to hear and see that episode. So yeah, absolutely. S McCabe, uh, we've already filmed Maggie and it was incredible. We spent Adam and I spent four or five days out there, uh, filming her for the documentary. Uh, here, I'll put this on the bottom of the screen. If, for those of you that aren't familiar, we're doing a documentary on the carnivore diet. It's called Healing Humanity, the Power of a Proper Human Diet. And um, if you're interested in supporting the documentary, the link is in the description below. All the funds that we get go 100% towards it. Uh, so, yeah, we're, we have Maggie we're filming, and there's a couple other folks, too, that uh, I, I've heard so many stories from people in their 60s, 70s, and 80s just thriving as carnivores. So we're definitely including that as a big part of the documentary because I think it's something that everyone can relate to and everyone is concerned about. And the stories I heard over and over again, right, we got Carnivore Ron is in the chat too. Shout out Carnivore Ron. He was one of the first people on my channel. And um, he's, he's killing it on carnivore and hitting the gym all the time. And looks and acts and is flexible and way way younger than most people are and i think he said to me when i interviewed him is like most of the people his age are they have mobility scooters or they're in canes or they have aches and pains and mobility issues and things like that and he's just not experiencing it and uh i think in a lot of those cases it's inflammation and it's from eating improper mm -hmm. foods so uh thank you for that question kevin are do you have some more time i can't believe it. it's already been an hour and 10 minutes here I'm good. Yeah, we can keep going okay. as long as you want. All right. We got a couple more questions here. Uh, let's see. Sunny Star said, My, I think she meant to say 30 year old son is a truck driver. How can he be a carnivore being an OTR truck driver? Hmm. Yeah, that is tough. I, I will tell you this when we travel, it does take a lot of preparation. Um, we, we, we usually take a lot of boiled eggs with us. Um, I'll usually cook up a bunch of hamburger patties 
uh, beforehand and uh, put them in Tupperware and a little cooler with some ice. Um, I have found for me personally, I have to meal prep when I'm traveling. We go back and forth to Clemson a good bit. We tailgate. We go watch football games with Daniel. Um, that's four and a half hour ride for us. We stay in hotel rooms and, and all this other stuff. We, My wife is going to kill me that I'm saying this on a live stream. But when we travel, we eat a lot of Waffle House. And I go into a Waffle House. I order 10 scrambled eggs and two sides of bacon. And I tell them to put as much butter as they can in the eggs. And they look at me like, uh, 10 scrambled eggs and a side of bacon. I'm like, yep, that's all I want. But I mean, it's open 24 hours a day. There's a Waffle House everywhere. And I eat a bunch of eggs and bacon. I've even had some Waffle House uh, ribeyes before. They're actually pretty good. Um, you know, it is what it is. But for me, traveling, it does require a lot of meal prep planning for me. I, I am not the type of guy that's going to roll up to a drive through I, now, I think I've seen on one of your videos, Carrie, where you guys ordered a bunch of hamburger patties at McDonald's. Yeah. N- never crossed my mind to even see if McDonald's would do that for me or Wendy's or anything like that. But That was a fun adventure with Jeff. Uh, Jeff took his – so his two boys – Jeff's carnivore. Uh, his boys are carnivore, mostly carnivore. Uh, and we went to McDonald's and ordered – it was it was really funny we got it on video he ordered 30 i think it was 31 patties and the mcdonald's mm-hmm. patties a lot of people are like oh that's bad there's stuff in it they're it's 100 percent beef and salt and that's it yeah. um and i don't know if we can get the same cost here in the u.s they were like a buck a piece wow um, so if you if you calculate that out too it's not that bad you're getting burger patties so we did that with some redmond salt but yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's going to be tough, Sunny Star. I would suggest the same thing Kevin did. Lots of meal prep. I've watched a couple of YouTube videos from some truckers that they'll actually bring uh, like a grill with and pull it out alongside yeah. the truck and cook it. So stuff like that. I would do some more research as well because I've had a lot of comments. I swear there's been a couple from truck drivers that are also carnivores. So I know they're out there and I know they're doing it and being successful, but uh, probably requires a little bit more planning and preparation. Uh, Adam Solar, the one issue that hasn't cleared up yet is eczema. Any advice? I no longer have sleep apnea, prostate issues, or plantar fasciitis. This took time to clear up. Yeah, I mean, I haven't ever experienced eczema myself. Um, I've seen a couple YouTubers who have, and I do know that it took a while. I don't know how long it took for the other stuff to clear up, but this this one YouTuber I was watching, I actually sent her t- over to Rebecca, my daughter. I believe it took almost almost 18 months, um, but it just kept getting better and better and better. Um, and uh, it um, she actually is the one that kind of taught me a lot about upping my fat content. And when she began to eat a lot more fat, her skin clarity became a lot better quicker. But it, the eczema did take quite a while for it to clear up. Yeah. If, if it were me, one thing I would suggest is maybe try doing lion diet for three days. Ooh, Not forever. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Just give it three days and see, cause maybe I know some people like egg whites will get them some mm-hmm. little weird like cheese, things like that. So, uh, I, that's my go-to advice for so many. I did lion diet for 60 days. I felt incredible doing, uh, just lion diet. So just beef, salt, and water for three yep. days and see if uh, you notice anything. I don't know if you would notice anything in three days, but maybe you will. Uh, or maybe try it for a little bit longer. Jason asked, where did you get some of your ideas for meals when you got started? Ooh. Um, Dr. Kim Berry, Dr. Anthony Chafee. Um, there were several YouTube channels. I mean, we don't really watch live TV. It was all YouTube. I'm a technology guy, so and I have my own YouTube channel. So I started using YouTube a bunch, and um, and that's when I stumbled on the, on the carry. Um, but there's so much information out there. Uh, for me, really, seriously, it's beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. I mean, I can't say that enough. It's just beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Yeah, same for me. I keep it real simple. Mm-hmm. There is a um, ketogenic woman, Anita. She's got a website and a YouTube channel, and she does. She used to just do keto stuff. Now she's doing mostly carnivore recipes. So she has more ideas if you want to get more creative. But for me, it's just this. People always ask that. Tell me what exactly what you're eating. I'm like, pretty boring. Pretty boring. Bacon, egg, 
it's delicious though i wouldn't yep. change it for the world but it's like bacon and eggs for breakfast and some hamburger patties or a ribeye for dinner and that's mm -hmm. about it uh pipes mcgee love that name how do you break a fast being a carnivore uh well i did that yesterday i did it with bone broth i saved the bones so i had a bunch of uh i don't know t-bones porterhouse bones i had in the freezer i just put them in a big thing of water and uh cooked them up boiled them up made some broth uh, I had the broth and then I waited. I was real careful. I waited a couple hours, especially because I didn't eat for eight days. So that was kind of a long mm -hmm. one. I know you can get really sick if you eat stuff too fast afterwards. So that's what I did. Uh, have you done any sort of fasting, Kevin? Not for eight days. I mean, I've done two days here and there, you know, different fasts like that. But um, and really nothing drove it. It just I just wanted to see how it would feel. And usually after a fast, it would always I, I crave eggs and bacon. I could eat eggs and bacon every meal. I mean, literally, I don't know why, but that's usually how I break a fast is eggs and bacon. Yep. But I haven't done an eight day fast. I would probably ease into it a little differently on an eight day fast. Right. Yeah. For most of what I heard, it's uh, definitely easing into it. And it seems like bone broth is a good one for carnivores mm -hmm. for sure. Depends on what you're doing too. Like this fast was easier for me because I was carnivore before I've done fasting when I was on the standard American diet. It was a nightmare because you got to get your body into ketosis, which is you can end up with keto flu and then you're trying to fast on top of it. So right. if you're doing carnivore and going into a fast, it's a lot easier. Oh, uh, here's a, here's a tough question for me. How painful is it to sell candy and soda at your movie theater? I had a tough time at Halloween giving out candy. It's a very, it's a great question and uh, I'll be open and transparent. It's tough. I was uh, a couple of weeks ago, I was pouring, the lady said, get the kid a Pepsi, a large Pepsi. And I was pouring it for this kid and I'm looking at the kid and I'm just like, I didn't want to do it. Like I really, honestly, it's, uh, it's become a big issue for me. Uh, a lot of people commenting, you're a hypocrite. What are you doing? And I feel it a little bit. I don't know what to do, honestly, though, because our, this movie theater, been here since 1859 before lincoln was president and people don't understand the business side of the movie theater if we didn't sell concessions we would be bankrupt uh and we're doing this as kind of a charity like i we've we've been running the theater for over a year we haven't taken a penny out of the theater our ticket prices are five dollars the industry average is nine dollars and fifty cents so but we have brand new movies we have the new hunger games movie right now i just loaded it up just a couple minutes before this video started uh, but I, like when we sell a five dollar ticket, we'll sometimes get like seventy five cents or like a dollar. Like we get nothing off of that, so it's a tough thing for me. Uh, the the way I've dealt with it is we offer grass fed beef sticks, we offer spring water, and we offer um, clean um, pork rinds as well. Mm -hmm. And actually, a lot of people have been starting to buy those, so I feel a little bit better about that. My thought of it is this. It's like if we had a cigarette machine here for 100 years, I totally think cigarettes are horrible for you. Uh, I probably wouldn't do that either. But if, if if I got rid of that cigarette machine and said, now, now you guys can't have cigarettes at the movie theater, they would literally just walk across the street and buy cigarettes from the gas station across the street. So I, I, I don't know. I'm trying to make excuses, but I'm like, if I stop selling that, they're going to go across the street and they're going to buy it anyways. And then the movie theater is going to go out of business. So I'm trying to do everything I can to encourage people to eat the way I do. I hope there's a day at the movie theater where we don't have to sell any of that junk anymore. And it's all just stuff that I like to eat. Frankly, I'll like it a lot better for myself. We'll have some hard boiled eggs and maybe a little steak thing off on the side. I don't know. Uh, some clean uh, beef jerky or something like that. Uh, I hope that day comes, but in the meantime, I, I, I'm doing the best I can to keep the movie theater afloat uh, while also offering other options for people. Trucking classics. How would you recommend to a loved one that's very unhealthy to start the carnivore diet? I'll take a stab at this. I would share some videos from other people, someone similar to them that's been in their similar shoes. So if they're very unhealthy, I don't know what that means, very unhealthy. I was very unhealthy. I was 100 pounds overweight, but I, my worst thing was the depression and anxiety. So if this was someone that was horribly depressed and anxious, I would show them one of my videos. If it's someone that's really overweight, I would show them someone's videos like Kevin's or uh, Limitless Lindy who uh, Dr. Baker also showed on his podcast today with Joe Rogan, which is crazy. Lindy was seven, 800 pounds. 
lost an incredible wow. amount of weight. So I, I would do that. That's the whole reason we're doing the documentary, not to keep uh, mentioning the documentary, but that's the whole reason is because I think these personal experiences and stories, being able to share those, they're going to resonate with different individuals. That's the only way you can change people. Uh, your, your loved one that's very unhealthy, there's nothing you could say to that person that's going to convince them to change. They have to want to change on their right. own. But if they see someone else doing it, it may inspire them to want to do it a little bit more. So that would be my advice. I don't know, if, Kevin, if you have anything to add to that. No, I agree 100%. Sometimes the people you love the most are the hardest to talk with. And sometimes you have to just give them other avenues to go explore. And the hope is they will see it and, and, and grab onto it. No, Carrie, I think you answered that great. Tina Kathleen said... Uh, Kevin, are your family also eating carnivore? I think we touched on that a little bit. Yep. My wife, myself, um, my son and daughter. My, my son is kind of keto, keto vore. And my daughter's just kind of gotten a little more expo exposure to it from me here recently. So we'll see. Nice. Uh, M. Keith, meant to ask this earlier. Will the weight come off relatively fast? My, my first 50 pounds came off very quickly. Um, and then the other 60 pounds, I would have times where the weight would come off and then it would kind of plateau out. And, um, I just didn't worry about it. I, there was actually, you know, the scale can be a dangerous thing. You start living by that scale, you know, and that's, that's dangerous. But, um, the first 50 came off relatively quick for me. The last 60, it took a little more time, but kept going. Yep. Yeah, similar for me. It came off pretty quick. Um, I would just caution to be worried about that because everyone, so many people I've talked to, they're like, yeah, the mm -hmm. weight came off, but it was all these other things that were the benefits. So um, the weight, the weight came off quick for me, but everybody's different depending on your age. I think it might be a little easier for men than women, and depending on your age and I don't know genetics or whatever, mm -hmm. it might take a little bit longer. But uh, make sure you have that good reason why. If it's just the weight loss, I, I, I hope you can stick to it then and you don't just lose the weight and then it starts coming back. Uh, got to have a got to have a powerful reason why. Uh, question. Will the movie also cover ethical and humane farming methods? Yes, I hope to as much as we can without making the documentary eight hours long because we have so, so much we're including in it already. But I've already been digging into that quite a bit. Uh, I did a video with my neighbor. Uh, I get a lot of my grass fed beef from my neighbor and uh, I see the cows every single day. I see the lives they have. Kevin mentioned earlier about, you know, the ethics of uh, eating meat and things like that. I have come to the conclusion. I think carnivore is the most ethical uh, compassionate way to eat. Because if I get that grass fed cow, and that's pretty much all I eat, like I said before, chicken every now and then, but very rarely, that one cow gives me hundreds of meals. And before that, I was eating salad and chips and all this garbage food and everything. And uh, it's amazing how much, how many animals are killed to grow plants. Um, mm -hmm. Just pesticides alone. I know I, I sound like a broken record, but it's like 64 million birds die a year from pesticide poisoning. And then the deer die and the foxes die and then all the insects die. And then like when they go into to plant uh, some crops, it, like whole ecosystems end up getting torn up. And then the amount of stuff you got to put in there. Then there's all sorts of other things I learned from when we filmed Maggie. Uh, she was talking about, Carrie, just think about this. So much is going on right now where they're growing all of these plants and processed foods and or plants that end up in processed foods. Uh, and they, they take everything out of the soil, but they're not putting it back in. You used to have cows and animals grazing and then their manure would go on the soil and it would regenerate it. And then you'd plant something in there and then you'd get that nutrients back. All that nutrients is gone now. They just keep taking it out over and over and over again. That has downstream effects as well. So, uh yeah, short answer, long. Absolutely. I hope to cover that for sure. Uh, we're going to try to cover it in the documentary, and then we're going to try to do it even more justice, hopefully, afterwards. We're strongly considering doing a series so that we can cover each of these topics in more depth and give them the uh, the time they deserve to really cover them because uh, we've got so much great content right now. We've already filmed Maggie. Uh, we filmed Bill Knott in Alaska. I'm going to go back and film him again and then again. Uh, and he was just in the chat too. Shout out Bill Knott. 
uh, hoping to film him two more times. But we could do a whole documentary on Bill. I could do a whole documentary on Maggie. So that's the one issue we're running into now is not having the documentary be too long. But these are all the topics we want to cover. Obesity, mental health, type 2 diabetes, aging, reproductive, heart health. Uh, there's another one, too, on there that I missed. So absolutely, we do hope to, to cover those. And then Tina Kathleen, it looks like we got one more question from Tina. What's your go-to treat carnivore meal? Me as a ribeye. Same. <laughs> Next question. Uh, yeah, that would be my, I guess the only thing I would add is the reverse seared cherry smoked ribeye that takes me a couple hours. And I think I'm not going to, Kevin, I, I was joking before. I'm like, I ruined it for myself doing the smoking reverse seared method because it's so good, but it takes so long. But then when I'm talking to Dr. Chafee, and he's showing me how he ages steaks in his refrigerator. I'm like, I can't, I can't do that now. I'm gonna ruin it for myself. I gotta go through this whole process. I uh I can't I, I can't wait till we film Dr. Chafee because I want to look in that refrigerator so bad. That's those right. are life goals right there, right? Yeah. Kevin, open the fridge up and the Dr. Chafee fridge with all the yeah. meat in there Dry and all the meat. aging beef. Right. Yeah, that's gonna be incredible. Right. Um, so that's my go-to. I'm trying to think if there's anything else go-to wise. Um, there's a there's a steak restaurant in Chicago that um, I went to when I was on keto, and they had one of the best. I don't. So, a lot of I, I prefer to eat at home. I I really I'm. Yeah. It's not an ego thing, but I've cooked so many steaks now. I could cook it perfectly. I think I can cook it better than a steak place. But there's one place in Chicago that I went to that I still really get a craving for and I like. Uh, and they've got this big porterhouse, and they they can get it so hot that they could just get that crisp on it. But, right. Um. That's that would be my other like if I if I had a big. If I could have anything, that would be the one. Oh, Susan also mentioned I like the Power Bowl too. That is very true. That was what I broke the fast with yesterday. Jen made me an amazing uh, Power Bowl, which is just beef, butter, bacon, eggs all in a bowl, uh, mm -hmm. scrambled up together. That's one of my favorites. Awesome. Well, hey, I think we got through all the questions there. This is crazy. I, Kevin, uh, shout out to Kevin. I really appreciate you sharing your story on here. Uh, Kevin's channel is linked to in the description below. Um, man, there's 485 people on here right now. This is kind of crazy. Ah, no, this is exciting. Um, I'm, I'm hoping a lot of my, uh, subscribers showed up. I'm, I'm trying everything I can to, uh, share this story with the racing community. So many race car drivers are so unhealthy and, um, you know, I lost 110 pounds and my drag car sped up four miles an hour in the eighth mile. Um, you know, so you're talking from zero to 150 miles an hour and a, a click over four seconds. So 110 pounds of weight makes a big difference in how a drag car operates. Um, so that's really cool. Yeah. You're the data guy. You got it all down pat. That's yeah. awesome. Is there anything else you want to shout out before we wrap it up? No, Gary, thank you. Um, this has been such a pleasure. I'm a huge fan of, of your channel and what you're doing in the community and the, and the, uh, support you're given in the cancer community as well. I'm very impressed with the effort you're going in. So thank you for having me on here. I'm a huge fan. And maybe one of these days we can meet up face to face and do some great things together. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, I always say it. I know I sound like a middle schooler, but we're, we're friends now. If you ever need anything, let yep. me know. I'd, I'd love to chat with you more and follow up. And uh, definitely if I'm down in that area, I'll give you a phone call and absolutely. meet up in person for sure. Awesome. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Kevin. Appreciate it. Thank you, everyone, for joining us and for all the great questions. And uh, have a good night. Bye. Yep. Bye-bye.